the labs uh, outside the uh, LXCL facility. So now I'm a gaping note of uh, research uh, as well as the research. Yeah, yeah, Oh, the introduction of the uh, today's speaker, I will just produce the recomposer also. Same couple of days to 30 minutes to some special and 30 minutes is special and you want a security when you want a great to say you are appeal to yourself and ask questions. Notably, as mine is mounted for sitting over here. So uh please ask your question loudly here and all the next from Zuri with the chat and write question there. And we will try to charge all the story mics, but please keep yourself muted for the whole presentation uh, part. So today's topic is uh input of global design on traffic safety. Uh, don't be shut now. I will discuss input of global design and drive out the perception of the area potential speed choice because later. So today's uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Jay Chapna, who is a uh, uh, professor of applied psychology at the University of Applied Science, so he has considered some of the skills of applied psychology. So um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, Singapore. Good morning, Zurich. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, very glad to be here and thank you for the opportunity to share some of our results from our traffic safety research here in Singapore and then Zurich. So to start, I would like to um, give you a bit of background myself so you understand why I'm standing here and what my perspective is on traffic safety. So again, he has already mentioned it in the introduction. I'm from the School of Psychology of the University of Applied Sciences of Western Switzerland. So no surprises here, I'm a psychologist. And my main focus in my research is to understand behavior change from a psychological perspective. And this is also the focus in many of my research projects in various areas. So we look into behavior change in health so to motivate people to adopt healthier behaviors. We look into behavior change in the area of pro environment behavior. So how to motivate people to use, for example, more environmentally friendly means of transportation. But my main area of research recently is in mobility and safety issues, where the same psychological, similar psychological questions arise if you want to understand, if you want to move people towards a more safe behavior. And um, the research that I'm presenting today is actually being inspired by a researcher that has started in collaboration with colleagues six years ago, exactly in this building, in collaboration with a project, uh, Future Cities Laboratory, with uh, my colleagues, uh, you know, and my colleague. And it's uh, really a continuation of what we've been looking into to better understand safety and traffic safety. At that time, it was in the area of cycling, cycling research still. But today, we're going to look into drivers' behavior and safety, uh, how we can motivate to drive more safely. And I guess even to lay people, it's not a surprise that reducing speed has also a negative impact on traffic accidents uh, and the severity of traffic accidents. So we have reduced speed is linked to uh, traffic safety. That's not my area of expertise, of course, but um, I can refer here to the experts of the field. What might be a bit more elaborate to think about, and I guess here also uh, are a couple of people present who think about work planning, and what you also probably take into consideration is not just 
safely, but a more broader view of planning, which also includes quality of life. It's a broad concept, um, which includes safety, but also uh, the reduction of noise emissions, for example. So people like to spend time in roads and they feel comfortable. And I've done a bit of a um, oops, investigation um, what happens here in Singapore, so around some more or less uh, recent articles and science that are concerned with the similar questions. So apparently there have been a couple of pilot projects where they want to uh, reduce speed limits to 30 kilometers per hour, uh, which is a, a similar question that happening so all over Europe and in Switzerland. And um, what's even closer to the question here in Canada is uh, also close um, enough is this question of seeing roads or streets as destination. And really these questions that, that come up when you do not focus mainly on cars, but that you see an urban environment and road also to be a place that is livable and you do not spend time. So uh, this is an important motivation um, to better understand how do we get speed reduction. So um, you would probably say, let's have speed limits. That's the easiest way. Um, however, research has shown there is a very low compliance with speed limits. It might be more fun to drive faster. It might be because it's uh, the motivation to get faster from point A to B. It can also be, it's sometimes a bit difficult to drive very slowly. So that might not even be bad motivation behind it, but it's just, uh, it feels very slow to go at low speeds. That's why also, um, this is research from Switzerland for low speed limits the compliance is even lower, so it's tricky. Of course, you can have law enforcement, um, but also law enforcement has limitations, um, particularly looking into uh, motivations, without just external motivation, no intrinsic motivation, and as soon as you relieve law enforcement, as soon as you stop controlling speeds, that are actually chosen, so you actually measure, they go up again. So we might think of better options or other options, additional measures to have to lower, to reduce actual speed. And one of these measures is uh, being subject of our research. Now, um, I have prepared for you a couple of questions that have also been asked to our subjects. Um, uh, here you can see a street design and uh, it's a picture taken out of our virtual reality simulation and the question is now the audience um, if you pick up your smartphones I hope everyone has their devices here and connect to um, uh, multimeter, so the audience. <laughs> so does it work? And um, you can indicate how fast would you drive this road? It's the look and feel of a Swiss road that would you imagine yourself to be in this situation.
Okay. Then let's move on to a second example. Looks a bit different. You have to reconnect. It's a different. Okay, let's have a look at the results. So here we already heard the example presenting here the first example. So remember it's been a very bland street. And uh, interestingly enough, we have half of the people who would go for 50 miles per hour, uh, kilometers per hour and about half uh, for 30 kilometers per hour. It looks pretty different here. I'm not sharing it. It looks like it's working better. Um, so here we have more diversity. So um, although the uh, same amount of people go for 30 kilometers per hour, but some people would even go I remember it's the one with these parking lots on the side. And um, some of you would also go as fast as this. And here, the third option together with the cyclists. So here, even here we have one person who go 80 kilometers per hour, so a little faster. And the majority would think this is a road that goes um, where the speed limit is 50 kilometers per hour or speed limit, but they think 50 kilometers per hour is. Um, so let's go back to the presentation. <laughs> so I get confused. So, oops. so what the results have already shown, street design has an influence on how fast you would drive. Of course, it's a limited, um, the, the survey here is limited, you're not actually in a car, um, but still, I think the evidence is clear. We have an impact road design on the speed choice. And that was the departure point of our research and our research question is how does road design influence driver's behavior. And as psychologists, so um, we were collaborating in an interdisciplinary team, but as psychologists, of course, we were also interested in the mechanisms that are behind these effects. So he proposed it's got something to do with people's perception. So the first question is, how does road design people's perception? Um, perception, such as what do they uh, expect also when they see parking lots on the side or when they see bicycle lanes or a central line. So, um, and also how does this impact in the end their speed choice? So how far they would hold these roads. And these here are uh, two examples from Switzerland where you see the exact same road that has been it's not exactly the same, but similar road type that has been reconstructed from a more car oriented, uh, probably a faster driving or inspiring faster driving type of road 
to a road that's supposed to reduce speeds because of But before we go into answering those research questions that I've just shown you, I would like to recognize my co-authors and the research teams. So what I'm going to present to you today is a results from two different research projects. Uh, one of them was concerned with the question of self-explaining roads and forgiving roads, uh, which was led by the and as you can see here, uh, it's a large research team uh, with people from urban planning and experts from Sochi and Nihar um, to uh, get into this topic of how to plan roads that are reducing or enhancing traffic safety. And um, our second project, um, I was collaborating with uh, my colleagues from civil engineering, Alex Ehrlott and Michael who have uh, the knowledge or expertise planning part, and as well practitioners, and my colleagues from the IT departments that were uh, doing the most really easy information part here, and we as psychologists were responsible for the whole experiment. Uh, so, to better understand um, the influence of road design on speed choice, safety behavior, we want to look at a couple of possible explanations. So, uh, here as an overview, what could be possible explanations? Um, the title of our first experiment is already give you some hints. So we look into the concept of self-explaining roads. It's a concept that goes back to the 90s and is um, related to the idea that the environment or the context is a form of communication and transports information. And here, easy, uh, on the left-hand side, you can see um, an urban road. It's defined that the parking cars, you can walk, uh, you can expect people there, so probably um, you think that you go in a slow speed, whereas it's very easy to recognize motorway or highway where you very fast, no other people um, uh, you do not have uh, any uh, cars or so on that could cause some. What is it? One explanation. Um, maybe in addition, uh, there are other explanations um, that go also together with the idea of self-explaining, but also be an in an adult to better understand why does it where we can observe a relationship between road design and behavior. So uh, one of them is cognitive load. So it's all connected. Self-explaining, and the idea is the higher the cognitive load, the more resources the driver needs to drive. So in order to have sufficient capacity to deal with the the challenges while driving, they reduce speed. Um, yeah, as an example, uh, we, have, we have here uh, cars parked inside. Uh, it's more, a more complex environment. Maybe people are getting out of the car, there is a risk of getting injured or to injure someone, and therefore reduce speed. So, um, in this case, it's not only complexity, but it could also be risk perception. Uh, higher risks that are associated with a specific situation could also lead to a reduction of speeds. And um, finally, um, there is a more set. I'm sorry, social psychology. 
area of expertise. Um, but I think this is uh, also something which is interesting to um, consider here that the more objects there are in uh, my peripheral vision, the faster I feel that I'm driving. And this, in respect, will reduce my speed because it feels slow, too fast or it feels slower. Um, okay, so these are four possible explanations. Let's, uh, now let's have a look at the results we got from our studies. So most of these studies are studies where we use a virtual reality driving simulator. Um, in this first study, we were more interested in looking at the different processes. Uh, so um, we, it was the study that was on self-explaining roads. So we would like to understand which types of road designs might be self-explaining and what are the different psychological processes that might be behind this. So um, the perceptions and we have different levels of behavioral So in this study, we did not actually measure actual viral behavior, but um, intentions. So we asked people whether um, or how fast they would go up. Um, so it's a, an experimental design. It's a within subject design. We had um, the overall study was larger, so I'm focusing on one part where we look into uh, street design in the rural um, area. So here you see a couple of pictures out of the 3D design. You see here um, crossroads. That's actually not part of the results what I'm going to show you, but um, what it shows you that we have three different perspectives in the overall studies included uh, cyclist perspective and pedestrian perspective. We're going to focus on the driver's perspective for today. Uh, our overall sample was a uh, set of participants that were uh, going through uh, our uh, 3D uh, environment. Sorry, uh, the resolutions are very good, but uh, it's a, a peak hole view into our lab in at our school in Holton, in Switzerland. Um, so uh, we have here a um, cycling driver simulator uh, and the uh, or driver simulator simulation. So at least the people get the feel that they're in the situation, despite the, the fact, unfortunately, we have not had the, the opportunity to have a feedback here. So uh, it was basically a video that goes through, uh, which allowed for some immersion, but of course, not the tools to be. Um, sorry, too fast. So um, these are the five experimental conditions, or let's say it's four experimental conditions for the slope design. So um, it depends on how you see it. The standard center line would be a comparison condition, the normal condition, the normal condition our road would look like. Uh, then we have this uh, design with no central line. And um, our designers in, our, in this project, they came up with a couple of new possible designs. And here is the focus on those new designs. Um, I'm afraid it's a bit too far away, but um, for Switzerland, at least, these are double types of designs dotted line and here uh, at the right hand side a uh, center line that is offset and there we go right <coughs> into the results what you see here is uh, the answers or a distribution of answers to the question what do you think how far what's the speed limit here and this question was um, addressing our research question with respect to how understandable is the street design. Do people understand that this is supposed to be a road where you reduce your speed? And 
Um, what you can see here is that um, we have um, here this standard central line and the standard central line leads people to think this is a road where they can drive 50 kilometers per hour. And in comparison, if we have the um, central line that's offset, uh, where we have clearly the impacts um, of this design, a lot more people would think this is a road where slower speeds are appropriate. So, and all the other um, differences, so this is a significant step, the uh, high square test, I would say this difference is statistically relevant. Um, we ask people how far, how fast we drive. So similar question as we just had before. And there is a significant lower speed chosen for again the central line that is offset. So this seems to be a design that leads people to choose slower speeds. Something uh, now mentioned we're interested in the processes. So we ask people about their perceptions, safety, and um, how much concentration they need to drive here. That's a question of uh, complexity and risk perception. Uh, what we can see uh, only significant uh, differences here to the standard center line situation is that we have lower uh, levels of safety, so probably higher levels of risk protection for the um, offset central line, and we have higher levels of um, concentration needed for this situation. So this could be an indication that these processes actually are relevant for the different speed choices. So um, our sample was very small, so we go for a simple correlation, experiment correlation to see whether we have any relationship here. And as a researcher, very often I get disappointed, but this is real empirical data here. Uh, we didn't find any correlation between seed choice and those psychological so no relationship between perceived safety or concentration needed and the speed people would choose. But we find uh, correlations between uh, concentration and safety perception. And uh, one additional question we ask, would you behave more cautiously or would you drive more cautiously in this situation? So at least we have some hints here that there is a relation. So um, and with respect to our questions, some road designs might make it a little more self-explainable. Um, so uh, particularly the offset central line. Also uh, one specific road design, if it's really different from what we expect, leads to um, the behavioral intentions to drive support impact here. And, there seems to be an impact of those psychological um, aspects. So they influence how we perceive the world. However, this perception does not have direct impact on speed chosen and no direct direct impact on uh, how fast it is. So we move on. So we say this study has limitations, of course. We are just looking at the behavioral intention. So for the second study I'm going to present to you, um, we wanted to go closer to actual behavior. But as always, if you look into safety behavior, road behavior, real accidents are very difficult to observe. It's also an ethical question whether you have people driving and observe their behavior for the hope that they can drive safely. So um, we uh, came up with this idea to use a really a virtual reality drive simulator as in many other studies um, to have the uh, advantages that we're as close as possible to real behavior whilst we can actually um, control the situation. And 
Um, with this background, we try to really answer the question of physical design have any impact on actual behavior and um, at the same time, also control for those psychological processes that are behind such as safety perceptions and the perception of the Mentioned virtual reality, um, uh, 3D simulation here with uh, the possibility to steer, uh, to break, and to move on several um, We have a measurement of the second. Uh, so we have really continuous data on speed. And in this study, I think. Participants uh, will go through our treatments. Um, additionally, we also conducted a questionnaire study. So, after driving through uh, our treatments, we participants will answer a couple of questions on how they perceived uh, different situations and uh, how, how immersive they perceived. Um, yeah, you know, our lab, same thing. Um, and here you can see uh, one of my colleagues uh, that is uh, testing our virtual reality simulation. And here you can see the experimental design. So uh, it's again uh, within subject design, and um, people would drive through um, a route, parkour, that seemed to be kind of natural in driving. We also told them a cover story. So the cover story was that we tested the virtual reality driver simulator. And um, we had a sequence one, which was a neutral, um, uh, the neutral condition uh, with no intervention and no changes in the design. And then as you can see, we had several treatments, treatment conditions uh, that would follow uh, each other in always the same sequence. And in between, we try to neutralize people's behavior. So they just go to a 50 sequence and then go back to the 30 kilobytes per hour. And there were street signs. Maybe uh, to have an impression how this looks like, I'll show you a brief video, but first a uh, couple of examples of different uh, street designs. Interesting. Were people instructed to keep the speed limit that there were signs? No, not directly. So we asked them to drive through these situations as they would normal. Yeah. But it's a tricky situation. We discussed and it's really a question because we discussed it in, in detail. So first, if you keep to the limits, you influence their behavior, yeah. and of course, they will be so. Um, and we also were considering to give them a task, so you need to give a point at a specific time, but then maybe consider because it also influences the behavior. So, yeah, it's kind of an unnatural situation. Um, but to hear ideas of the risk, how to deal with this. These are four examples out of our urban roads, and uh, here are four examples out of the roads and here um, a brief video out of our simulation so how this looks driving uh, in the simulator so you really have to push uh, the accelerator to go faster or slower um, so you enter uh, an urban area uh, we have um, dynamic simulation Unfortunately, for this video, we have a lot, we have no traffic that comes, and so there is a traffic uh, simulated here and also people on the road side. Here you can see the situation of the side markings. Uh, I'll move forward a bit. Um, so, here it uh, treatment ends, and here comes the mutual situation again where uh, it's a 50 speed limit and moving further on, we get out of town and there the speed limit is 80 kilometers per hour. Uh, again, here with the treatment of the large broader side.
And I'd like to dive into the results and a couple of simple, straightforward results in of um, the speech people chose it have chosen and um, I'm asking you to focus here on the orange means now for now, which are out of our virtual reality experiment. Um, here we have the reference condition. So this is the one without any um, design features that we specifically chosen. Um, and here we have the broad side markings, uh, parking lots and the trees on the side. Um, as you can already see very fast as uh, researchers probably here, uh, you see the differences are small. Um, we have here a significant difference. So uh, the trees on the side and the edges, they significantly reduce the speed that people are driving in virtual reality environment, um, but the differences are very small. Um, let's just have a deeper look into what's going on. So this is a multi-level regression analysis, um, more sophisticated analysis of what's going on, also taking into consideration that we have repeated measures here um, and the within subject design. Um, what we see here is two models that have been calculated um, with a short-term effects that means um, 50 to 100 meters into the treatment section, and the long term effect will be 100 to 225 meters. The overall section was actually about 300 meters, and we were cutting off the, the measures at the beginning and at the end uh, to have uh, a more uh, lower standard deviations, the adaptation to the treatment. And you can see here similarly, uh, we have for the long term effects, we only have the trees that lead to uh, 1.2 kilometers per hour reduction in speed, small, significant. If you look at the data on car accidents and severity of car accidents, this would also make a difference. So it's small, but still um, noteworthy. And the short term effects, we have a bit larger short term effects so for uh, the omission of the central line. And um, here it's indicated for the side markings. We're also controlling for uh, sensation seeking and rule obedience, um, just as a side uh, information, also psychological processes, or um, yeah aspects you need to consider. Okay, and a uh, quick look into the effects on the urban road. Oh, that's now back. This is the result of the questionnaire. So we have some influence here on the psychological aspects. So here we look into uh, how fast, what would, you, what would be your preferred speed? And here, uh, we do not have any effect on points to the trees, but we have an effect um, with regards to the parking lot sign. And we assume that this got something to do with uh, risk perception. Uh, here again, some simple analysis of uh, with regression. Uh, not regression and uh, correlation, and there is a negative correlation between how people, how risky people perceive those situations and uh, how fast they will drive in this situation. Similarly, here for uh, trees and benches, uh, not so much here for the site. So, again, some indication that the psychological processes might play a role in speed choice. However, we have the challenges here that there is no relationship with the actual driving speed they have chosen in the simulation. There is several explanations. Maybe there is no relationship. It's one valid 
explanation that we need to look for other psychological processes that are relevant to the instant current error. Uh, wishing that's relevant and the objects that are in the periphery. Um, or maybe it's a methodological problem because the questionnaire was after they were driving, so this we did not measure the perception right in the situation, and therefore we didn't get any relationships. Same story for the rural roads. Here it's a bit more consistent. So for all the treatments, we get significant results. Again, the results are small. And the differences, mean differences are very small, but consistently uh, in questionnaires and in your experiments, our treatments lead to a reduction of speech choice. This could be because the rural environment is less overall, so we have a clearer impact of what's going on as compared to urban roads, which are broader uh, complex. And here uh, we have also correlation between safety perceptions and complexity, although um, they're smaller as compared to the urban roads. And now to answer uh, research questions, we have here small things. Just a few for one specific road design um, on speech choice. We have more uh, consistent relationships on the rules on actual behavior. Uh, we have some indication that um, the preferred speed is influenced um, by road design, and we see that road design influences perceptions. However, we could not measure, or we do not have any empirical data that would provide us with a proof that there is a relationship. Well, this leads us uh, to um, the conclusion. We have small effects of single road design measures. So for the sake of the clean, experimental design, we have to chosen one measure, so sidewalks or trees, so we can really define the effect of one single Apparently, that just really is a very small effect, but there are small, small effects or effects. Um, these effects are more consistent on two roads, as I've mentioned, and the evidence on the psychological processes in mix. So there is an indication, but as a researcher, I'd always say this is uh, the inspiration for more and further research to investigate. So what we have discussed also with our partners and our industry partners in those projects, it would actually be interesting to really look at combinations of different designs uh, design measures, so not just one measure. Um, here, uh, an example of Singapore and from Peru, which has been redesigned uh, recently. If I'm not false here, I don't see me correctly. And um, they're also combining different measures. And of course, the sum of these different measures is an experimental situation that would be. What was also something which we discussed, uh, which would be interesting for further research, we also got some inconclusive results um, with regards to speed trends. When we compared our results with results at the field experiments, and we were wondering whether dynamic aspects are playing important role. And dynamic aspects are such as are there other people present? Are there actually people getting out of the forest that are on the side, part of the side? Are there actually cyclists that are using the bike lane? And these um, would be um, interesting for all veterans. So, and this is, um, and these are my concluding remarks. Thank you very much for your attention.
So thank you, Toby, for your presentation. Oh, it's there. Um, thank you for your presentation. Uh, and greetings to Michael. Um, the I was wondering, is there any study or have you considered uh, the difference between, let's say, the unusual nature of the design versus the road safety aspect of the design? Because if if you reduce the safety, you lower speed. Um, but it could also be, oh, this is a situation unusual, but so I lower my speed, but then you could get into a situation where once I get used to this condition, I will, you will lose the effect. I'm assuming that's not part of this study because that's too much to single out. But is, is there anything known about that split? Yeah, we were discussing this question, exactly this question together with uh, our uh, partners from the industry or from the planning because they're like, okay, but we can't change the streets and how it looks like just to make it look unfamiliar so people find it more complex or unsafe and then reduce their speed. Um, and also, this is actually a contradiction to the concept of self-explaining. On self-explaining, which is work the other way around, so you have to learn and you get to use the new design, and once you do learn that it's uh, low motion, slow down, then it has an effect. It doesn't have an effect. It's new. But I wouldn't know about any research that looks into this. So it's it's actually yeah, a very valid question as well. So how do we come out of this dilemma? New design, unusual design. Unusual is a very leading kind of yeah. property. It's, it's, it's here that it, you know you can conceptualize that it leads to a feeling of less ability or less safety or less control in the driver. But it's kind of why you want to avoid. Yeah. And it, it's also, I mean, also the safety aspect is actually. So it's actually tricky. Do you really want to make the roads unsafe yeah. or look unsafe? And yeah. this statement, and I, I, I forget who by that uh, says that the best way to make drivers drive more slowly is to put a spike in the middle of the steering wheel. <laughs> I don't know who said that, I forget. But so in that sense, yes, that's true. But of course, that's not. Yeah. So. And, and there shouldn't also be that dilemma of comfort versus risk. Yeah, it's, it's really something I think there's a lot of work still needed to, to find a good solution that works in between. Yeah, I have a question about the subdivision between many cities, or it's which the house and the side Try and destroy on the part of the existing symbol. They are still within it and post uh, the uh, white color with the white color flow to the river, not living, not segregated. It is so, uh, I think from your presentation, this is the beautiful drivers because they are shown low, it's much higher, but uh, at the same time, experience are uh, dangerous. Is fine design. Very interesting question. Also, um, very, um, yeah, we discussed this question a lot, particularly in our site research study.
Um, and what it has some positive impact is also when you look at it from a romantic perspective, if you want to get people to be more involved in active mobility, which has health benefits and romantic benefits as well, um, people are more likely to use uh, cycling infrastructure or walking infrastructure. So, yeah, it, it's really it's really hard to tell. And also people, I mean, there's actually research that's something I know in addition, there are less accidents if you have uh, this, uh, shared road design, because everyone is very cautious and careful. But people feel uncomfortable. And then we have again this thing. But I don't know if anyone has additional. The accuracy of the VR experiment compared to like an actual driving, it is there a huge difference? Or because I, I personally feel that when I, I mean, for example, when I was doing my driving test, there was a similar to VR kind of driving uh, exercise. Um, the, the 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 behavior, like my own behavior, tend to be different from when I. And in the actual world. And also, um, doing a VR experiments, does it differentiate a lot when we have a different number of cars and like can they on the road first? So we were also considering these different frequencies. So actually, from the second study, it was also one of the goals was to test the validity of a virtual reality driver simulator. So there are a lot of studies that pair Um, when we started to analyze our data and other things, we were really surprised. But uh, in many agencies, we also have, when you're talking about traffic safety, you also have a kind of methodology very relevant. One will ask, and we are people and cars. So they are the uh, driving patterns, at least in India, and in South Korea. So,
question or suggestion to Danny. Um, I know you're looking at road design, but I was also thinking about car design based on one of the videos because um, at some point you see the video of somebody using the simulator and you really hear the engine going. And okay. so that gives the response. People are saying, oh, they're going fast. What if I could just, because you could run the same experiment with different car audio files and maybe tweak it in such a way that they are stranger or less appealing or something like that to see whether that has an impact. Again, suddenly you have this stuff a lot, and my uh, excellent researchers uh, really uh, did done an excellent job. But we discussed so much about the audience, the audience, it's never happened about it, but then in the end, we are like, okay, now we have to decide. But I totally agree that even before we had. So I'm not happy with it. I'm still not happy with it because it's a uh, yeah. Considering the experimental design has been similar for everyone, so we kind of have any funding factors here, but yeah, and also something I assume there is a huge research going on in the industry that the almost people have to have a different. Sure. Hear more comments, more questions. Please, 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 please,